Hello everyone and welcome to uh week two of the Gopher Watch League. I'm Hello, here I'm today. your uh, your second caster, War. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna temporarily have a uh, whalefish casting. War has something that he is currently attending, but he should be here relatively soon. I just gotta make sure I'm streaming on the white channel because I literally can't tell. Yeah, it's it's on yep. the Gopher Watch League. Okay, perfect. We're live. Um, just so you guys know, let me know if audio is not messed up. Um, this is a new computer that I'm on, so hopefully it should have better quality, but as well as I might need to tune the audio down. Uh, we are waiting for them to go into lobby, but let's let's talk about this game really quick. We got the OTs versus the Anglers. Anglers did lose their first match where the OTs did win. However, you know, based on based on the predicted power rankings made by uh, the journalism team, uh, they put the angler at a significantly higher standing at number one compared to number nine, I believe. Um, so we'll have to see how it ends up happening. Potentially, you know, it might have just been a rough day for the anglers, but we'll have to see how it turns out. I haven't watched uh, either of them. I don't know if these matches that they both played were streamed i haven't watched either of them if they were uh so i have no no knowledge going into this match so yeah. uh let's let's see what happens yeah we're waiting for them to go live so yeah rory is currently fk so if anyone wants to blame someone t take your rage out on uh rory I might as well talk. Going okay, in. we're going in. Ilios first map. Okay, so Ilios here. Uh, me trying to get stuff set up. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so. We're on Ilios well here. We're gonna have to see what kind of comps we're looking to play. Uh, the angler's teasing a little bit of the the Winston dive with Bonesy on the DPS, a role that uh, he tends to play and is pretty good at it. You know, 4300 SR, pretty dominant player. Also, was pretty dominant on the off tank, but starting on the DPS, Zelos is here. That's a difference from their first game. Zelos unfortunately was not able to make their first game, so maybe he'll be the turning point. Whereas uh, the OTs are teasing a little bit of the brawl comp, so we're gonna have to kind of He's see gonna the roll out on the bolt. Okay, they fucked up the TP. Unfortunate. Am I allowed to cuss? No, no cuss. Okay, my fault. Yeah. Rory teasing the soldier, looking for a little more poke, but engage comes in. The OTs coming in from the roll. Lambo gets slept. Goes down to half HP. But they're gonna retreat a little bit. Bones, Boonie, looking for a hook here into the pit. Lambo's shield dropping dangerously low. Lumpy Seal tries to TP in, doesn't get anything. Lambo, fire strike deflected back. A big boop from Riddle Dog onto Boonie. Oh my god. Lambo in very low. No shield to speak of, but will be kept up by Shrewdle and Riddle Dog. Not for quite, not for, not for very long though, as he will go down to Mighty Dwarf. Sonic takes it down Riddle Dog as Rory trades out Zelos. A even fight here, three versus three. But Rusty is on that baby Devo right now. Rory, investing the visor. Wanting to keep the control of this point. Sonic and Boonie both dangerously low. And it looks like the OTs will clean up this fight. Yeah, OTs get a pretty big point win right there. They uh, won the fight while accruing percentage throughout it, which is kind of a misplay by the the anglers. They give up point as well as 40%. Bonesy does have this nano blade coming in, so we'll have to see whether he can get value with it. But I mean, it all just comes off of uh, Riddle Dog's boop onto Boonie there. 
basically opening up the fight with an early kill on the tank. It's a huge play that can't be understated. Mana Blade comes in though. Mana Blade comes in onto Flambo, an interesting target, but he goes into the back line, takes down Strudel. Chasing after Riddle Dog, will not catch him, but we'll go back for Flambo. And that's going to be a quick, clean fight win. From the looks of it, Booney gets booped again by Riddle Dog, <laughs> unfortunate. Yeah, Booney, Booney just can't seem to stay on the map at the moment. Bonesy comes with the Nana Blade, takes down two. Pretty clean team fight win, but at this point, if you're the OTs, you take that. You won the fight, you're at 63%, you got a lead. Or you lost the fight, you're at 63%, but you forced out Nana Blade. Looking in, maybe get a big shatter from Flambo here. He doesn't really have any shields to go by, just the one shield of Sigma. Could be a free shatter. Sigma made it out, but he gets cancelled out of it. Oh no. The bomb comes in from Rusty though. Could be big. Takes down Sonic, Lumpy Seal. A bit of a zoning blossom there. But Flambo's pushing into the back lines of the Reinhardt on that Ana. Will get slept, but woken up immediately by Brig. By Zelos. Ana goes it. off the map. Yeah, that's and that's it. going to be a fight win and a flip. Yeah, that's a pretty convincing teamfight win, even though that Zello stunned that uh, Shatter. But an early pick from Bonesy onto Lumpy Seal could turn the tide. Flux comes in. The Ray can miss the visor to counter. Beat traded. And a window invested. But Flambo's playing a little reserved here. Rusty's going to get rocked. The flash comes through, and and, and Flambo goes straight into the pit. Oh, but Sonic That's a big is boop. Boop. It's a big boop though, Riddle Dog and Lumpy Seal both taking out Sonic and Mighty Dwarf respectively. Big push from them. Bonesy off on the side. Map. Lumpy kills himself, off on the no. side. Lumpy dies. Oh no, this is... It's... Went very poorly for the... For the Arizona OTs. It was looking so strong after that double... Going out from Riddle Dog and Lumpy Seal, but... Flambo takes down Zelos. Bonesy goes into the pit. Oh my god. This is coming back. Riddle Dog is absolutely popping off. Getting away from point. Flambo into the back lines. On that Reinhardt. Goes down to Sonic. Sonic gets two. As he takes down Riddle Dog. Rory takes down two as well, though. Gets a third. Zelos on point alone with that rally. And it's looking like it's going to be a... It, this should, I think... Actually, I'm not sure. I was I was going to say this should be a fight win for the Anglers, but... I'm not 100% not sure about that as the Shatter comes down. Yeah, they're taking way too long. Or with another tactical visor. That's the third, if I'm not mistaken. But he goes down. Sonic and though is pounding. Oh Sonic is destroying. The angler is still in control of the point. Ajax, no. The, the Ajax comes through from Riddle Dog. That is a big, big mistake. I would think they, I think they would want that for the recontest if they can make it in time. Yeah, that's a big misplay from him. Even though Zelos uh, commits the rally a little late, lets his team dies. They end up being able to hold out for long enough. Bomb engage though from Rusty. Bomb comes in. Will not get anything, but will take down the shield of Sonic. Yeah, it's just pressing Sonic, Sonic comes in, gets okay. two. It's another two. Rusty will go down to Baby Diva form. Riddle Dog will be taken down. And that's going to be a first map for the Anglers. Yeah, pretty dominant showing for them. Not really, though. It's kind of misplaced from both teams, but it was just kind of which team could uh, throw harder. Riddle making huge plays, but not ending up to win it. And we will now be joining War for the cast. Thank you, Whalefish, for taking over for All a right. bit. But we're moving on to, All right, to see better you. to better cast. No, I'm better good. casting, real. Okay, right, bye bye. Hello, hello, War. Oh, hello, everybody. Wait, can can, can yep, I hear? Yeah, they can hear you. Yeah. Okay, awesome. For some reason, you aren't appearing in the actual Discord that I'm in. However, we make it work. Whatever works works. So. Oh, I gotta so, invite you to the lobby. Add me. Bark oh. eleven three three two. All right, I am people. We are on to Ilios runes here. Booney and Bonesy both on this Winston Genji pick, whereas 
you know, the OTs are going back to their roots. The little bit of a brawl comp. Rory is opting for the Genji, which is kind of a uh, interesting pick with this team comp, but maybe looking for some big plays for him to make on his own. We'll have to kind of be looking out on this Genji battle. Rory, everyone knows him as a really smart player, but Bonesy is actually the dominant, most dominant player to play in GoPro Watch League. Picks traded out though. Anglers with some kills. Currently winning the trades. Riddle Dog does fall to a Helix Rocket from Mighty Dwarf. Uh, it's just kind of poke going out here. Brig falls, but it's trades going in the favor of the awesome anglers at the moment. Yeah, they end up cleaning up that fight. Yes, they do end up cleaning up that fight, and great job by the anglers of sort of creating control. I believe the win condition for the anglers is just going to be enabling Bonesy, making sure that they're in the right spot to get picks, and then making sure the rest of your team is able to stay up, because it is a team game. It's not an individual game, so it's going to be the team efforts that are really showing up most here, and you are really nothing without a dominant team, so it's going to be coming in, seeing just what these teams can do for domination here, but Flambo Jambo looking for whatever domination they can can get just going in the swinging blade. helps find the need rematch bonesy potential drive blade potential right here picks up one able to find sonic chronic as well but picks are going the other way too roar also still active right now and maybe looking for some point cap but zello says no to that whooping off as mighty dwarf just doing a great job of cleaning up the rest of these picks yeah great commit from bonesy opts to use the blade before the nano boost comes through which ends up benefiting them greatly now they have the nano boost coming into the fight, probably looking for either a nano visor or a nano onto the monkey. Whereas in the side of the OTs, they don't really have any ults yet. They're getting really close to them, but they're opting to engage without their ultimates. Maybe a little bit too aggressive from them, but Rory gets the blade, pops the blade. It could be huge here. They seem to be using a bunch of ults just in sustaining of this fight, but ults are going to come out for the anglers too, but they're not going to get that much benefit. It seems like the ult usage is a little bit more beneficial on the side of the OT. Bone Booney just doing whatever they can with the Primal Rage just to create space. They do get 77%, but the point is going to flip in favor of the Arizona OTs, and now they're going to have control and the ult advantage going into this next fight. Yeah, Rory makes a huge play with the Dry Blade. Uh, you know, trying to do his best Bonesy impression. But, now they have a bunch of ults coming in, whereas the Anglers only have Diva Bomb. Diva Bomb is going to come out, as well as the Shatter, and that's going to be good for four. That's going to be the picks that, if you're an OT fan, that you want to see here. They do still have the beat, the sound barrier, if they want to sustain here. But... I mean, at this point in time, you're building up more alts simultaneously, and the Dead Eye is going to come through for Lumpy Seal on Cassidy. So, we're going to be looking for a big bomb if you're the uh, the awesome anglers here. Yeah, we'll have to see what he can set up with this bomb. Don't really have many alts going to it. Bonesy should get the salt, but Engage comes in early from the OTs. Lumpy Seal getting a pick on the Booney. Big play from him. Sonic still has not committed this bomb. Window comes in from Strudel, picks coming in, Bonesy does end up trading one, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I don't know if it is going to be enough, as Sonic Chronic does get DMACT fully eliminated, it feels like Strudel doesn't even need the window to perform, just finding picks where they need to, but remember, Rusty is going to be DMACT, should be able to build up the mech pretty quickly with these few shots coming in, I don't think the awesome anglers are going to be able to recontest with what they have right now, yes, Rusty able to get right back inside the mech, but this does spell promise for the anglers here with the three ultimates, the diva bomb coming out as well as the blade, but ults are going to come out on all sides here, Roar is going to be the first one to find picks, finds one, finds two, the dead eye from Lumpy Steel a bit wasted here, Mighty Dwarf you activates Visor, but no, gets shut down by Strudel, and the... <laughs> And the difference comes through from Rory onto Bonesy. And now, if you're an awesome angler, you just got a touch, but I don't think you can in that situation. So, second <coughs> map is going to go through to the Arizona OT. We're going on to map three. Yeah, at that point, it just comes into the difference of the beat. Bonesy went in for the blade engage, but Riddle just popped the beat to counter it. Great reaction from him. Pops beat. Their team sustains, whereas the awesome anglers were not... Or the... Yeah, awesome anglers were did not have that same sustain that comes with the beat. They were so close to their nano boost and their rally, but just weren't able to get it in time. However, this map, the OTs are opting for the dive. Something we tend not to see this team play. They're more a uh, brawl favored team with Flambo on his signature Ryan hero. 
However, we'll have to see what they do with it. Strudel, an amazing auto player, so getting him on his comfort pick could be amazing for their team. And the back line of the OTs have been absolutely clinical thus far into the games. I managed to catch half the first game. Sorry about being a little bit late, by the way, to everybody here. But I managed to catch a bit of first game, and they're just doing a great job of keeping their teammates up, making plays when they need to, getting picks when they need to. But other than that, it's just tactical gameplay. It's just basically textbook doing what you need to. And Roar finding a pick when they need to onto Mighty Dwarf. But that pick back onto um, Sonic... Pick from Sonic Chronic back onto Strudel there might be big for the awesome Anglos as they are able to find Flambo as well. Picks just going both ways, but the point control may be going to the OTs, but just as I say that, Sonic Chronic able to get back on point, create some space. Gets d by Roar though, and it's such a scrappy fight for this point. Yeah, really scrappy fight. Point trade still coming through. No one has capped the point. Rematch comes in from uh, Rusty. That should just spell the end of this fight unless. Barring some heroics from Bonesy, or maybe even Mighty Dwarf. Mighty Dwarf finding two picks. Could potentially turn this to a team. Pulse Bomb committed from Rory, and that's a boop off the map from Riley onto Mighty Dwarf. Great plays for them. Sonic kind of trying to do his best carry impression. Picking up many kills during that fight. I believe he got three final blows throughout that. Mighty Dwarf also showing up. At this point, you're looking for towards the other team members to, you know, pull out, pull out something. Make a play themselves. Yeah, no real ultimates built up uh, just yet. Bonesy finally gets the blade. We'll see if they're going to be able to use it. But no, it's going to be the mobility from Zelos instead. Bomb does come out from Rusty. Not able to find anything, but is able to disrupt the high ground. The counter bomb comes out from Sonic Chronic. Also not able to find anything here. But that might give the awesome anglers the control they need. That might enable Bonesy. And if you're enabling Bonesy, that is the most dangerous player to enable. They find Rusty. They're going for more. Trying to shut down. Lumpy Seal as best as they can. Does get the final onto Lumpy Seal, but not really able to find that much. The other pick is going to come out from the Nanode Primal of Bo Booney right here. Takes off one. Maybe going to be able to find a second as well. Yeah, great play from uh, all of the awesome anglers. Early rally came through. It ends up lining them to Stasain, even though they did lose Mighty Dwarf early, which, you know, could be a uh, detrimental pick for them, but... With Zealous is sustained, they're ending up able to pull the blade and confirm that team fight win. Coming in this next fight though, they only have High Noon, whereas the OTs have this Blossom coming up as well as the Coalescence. And Coalescence can be such a power for all to initiate, especially if you're able to take 50% of the point already. An Anti does come in, but I don't know if it's going to be enough as Rusty's already able to find a pick onto Booney thus far into the game. Oh my Blossom god. Blossom does come out, finds three, Roar there to pick up the fourth, and this has got to be the point for the Arizona OTs. Yeah, great play from OTs. I love the idea of coming and just instantly getting to point. They collected point. They have more of this rush style six man comp where they just want to bunker on point and just sustain. They got to point, and at that point, uh, they can just sustain. Lumpy gets the Blossom and commits it for the easy team fight win. And Flambo really showing up on main tank right here, just creating space, creating some control, even against a very, very dominant main tank like Booney for the awesome anglers. Looks like a fight here, breaking out again, and Flambo just showing the prowess, getting that another pick onto Booney, but picks going out both ways. What's really going to matter is the bomb, isn't able to find anything, not able to get something yet. Another bomb comes out again, not able to find anything, so... It's gonna just gonna be Zelos on point, utilizing Rally, just trying to stay alive as long as possible. But it is going to be almost a full cap for the Arizona OTs. All they need to do is hang on, all they need to do is keep control. But the DMEC is gonna be able to shut that down temporarily, and they're just gonna need to get back on point to recontest here. Yeah, great plays from the Awesome Anglers. They end up taking this point when I would say off some heroics from both Sonic and Bonesy. I think Sonic's really been the standout player on their team so far. <coughs> So far, this map, getting a lot of fun of those. Playing more the assassin style diva compared to like just straight up peeling, which I think is working out in their favor. And you know, Bonesy on the tracer, not necessarily one of his signature heroes, but a great, a great pick for him nonetheless. 
Bonesy on anybody at the end of the day has got to be a great pick. We joke that he can play any character, jack of all trades, and very, very dominant on all trades here. But fight coming out here, Bonesy actually finds the first pick onto Roar. That's going to be exactly what they need, but Coalescence is going to come up from Strudel here, trying to sustain, trying to keep the team alive as long as possible. It's going to be also Blossom from Lumpy Seal. This time, not able to find anything. Shut down by Sonic Chronic somehow, and now just Rusty on point. The bomb should be able to be enough to shut down oh their my teammates. God. They find two. That's a massive bomb. And that's going to be some more control for the awesome anglers on point. So Sonic can do no wrong right now. Unironically, he's deadlifting his team. 19 final blows. Bonesy has 21, but... You know, Sonic's on the diva. One of our... Not necessarily highest our players in the league, but nonetheless, doing super well. Zealous gets a boop onto Lumpy Seal as well. That kind of just seals it out. It's going to be really hard to sustain with or kill firm kills without your Reaper there. Yeah, Riddle doing the best they can. Just gliding around point, dancing around point, but I don't think it'll be enough. The awesome anglers there take map one, and what a thrilling first map to watch. Yeah, that was insane play from the awesome anglers. Honestly, I, I'm going to say it so far. So far, I I think, uh... Wait, what the heck? You think, uh? I think, uh, uh... Uh, uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no pressure. I can give some thoughts, too, if that matters yeah, yeah, most. Yeah. Like, this play right here by Sonic Chronic, absolutely insane. <laughs> Just <laughs> so much control, so much dominance. That's a player I want to look out for, but... Roar, another player that we should be looking out for here, showing up against Bonesy, especially on the second map there. It looks like our next map will be King's Row, a map where I believe um, both teams are going to be very confident, both of them having a very strong tank line here. Yeah, this should be a pretty dominant matchup coming in. Sonic Chronic so far, I think, is the real, like as I said, really standing out. Ended up getting 21 final blows that map. The same as Bonesy. Bonesy's your carry player. You're expecting him to get all the final blows. You're expecting him to pop off. But in the actuality, he's in, he's not doing it alone. Sonic's actually going crazy right now. Which, you know, that's what you want to see. That's a value player right there. Was on the Nyaru Nekos last season. A team that, you know, captained by me. You know, I, I scouted him out early. Yeah, yeah. I scouted him out early. I saw, I saw him, you know. Trained him a little bit. You know how it is. You know how it is. Nah, he's... So basically, basically, you're saying the only reason for their success is you. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. 100%. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on what was going on there. I believe oh, yeah. that we will be hopping into King's Row. And what do you think about the King's Row selection here? Because it feels like both teams could be dominant on this map. Yeah, this is a map that plays into both their compositions, I want to say. The angle? Do you have a very strange tank line as well as... Yeah, the Angler is absolutely amazing tank line. I think Boonie is one of the probably most dangerous Reinhardts in the entire league. I mean, you got to shout out Yeet as well. But looks like we're going to have a little bit of positioning switches for both these teams. And I believe we're going to have a few switch ups of the actual lineups here. We do see Kerbology come in for the awesome Anglers as well. However, just looking forward to this map in for the majority here and... Let us know if prod is R and we should be good to go. Yep, prod is R. R. Okay, cool, cool. Kerbology seems to be like their Lucio kind of player at this point. Um, although Kerbology is known for most of that Mercy play, is kind of fulfilling that overall generalist main support role. So is picking up that Lucio, which so far it's been pretty good in their uh, past game. We'll have to see whether the play continues. I can only assume that it will. But at this point, you know, we're talking about this game. We're going to see whether they can continue their uh, dominance. Remember, I believe Kerbology also, correct me if I'm wrong, most improved player of Season 5 and a very, very dominant player on all characters. And you can actually see Kerbology is going to end up going back while Zelos is going to go Lucio. And they're going to have a tall task trying to shut down the support line of both Riddle Dog and Strudel here because those two support players are very, very solid. Yeah, this is kind of, you know, not what I was expecting. Zealous, Elsa, and Thicken Back, he actually is a main support player as well, so... I guess it does make sense. Maybe they believe in the Kerbology, uh, Baptiste more than Emro. Emro, kind of like a, uh, I want to say, Ana Specialist, kind of. It's her favorite hero to play, is absolutely dominant on it. 
So we'll have to see whether the Kerbology Bappa ends up doing it for them, but Bonesy on his signature here of the Doomfist. We know what to expect. It's going to be some powerful play coming in from him. It's going to be a powerful play, but it's all about timing. It's all about can Booney and Bonesy both lead their own individual charges simultaneously and in a way that's able to disrupt the Arizona OTs. That has got to be the question. It looks like they're already able to get point control. They're already able to get one tick in their favor. And also, maybe not some picks going in their way it feels like the picks are just going left and right but if you're getting the point control you really can't complain about anything both the tanks or the um arizona ot's do get shut down rusty's fully dmaxed but it is going to be a fight win but at what cost they'd lost a lot of the point there yeah they lost a lot of lost a lot of point percentage but the benefit is they do have an ult advantage coming to this fight flambo already has that shatter built up so it could be looking for a potential big slam on Booney. Booney, a very dominant main tank player. We'll have to see if he's able to block the Shatter of Flambeau. Rusty does not have mech. Bonesy Engage comes in. Oh, huge Shatter from does Flambeau. come out. Four right there, and that's going to be the picks they need. Rusty's able to capitalize. Lumpy Seal investing the Deadeye as well right there just to clean up that fight. That's a clean team fight win. But Bonesy says, not without my contention. They find one, they find two. But either way, a team kill for the Arizona OTs and a great start to the hold. But they, is the ult advantage somewhat in the favor of the awesome anglers? Yeah, they do have ult advantage. That's the kind of cost of winning the... The first fight, you might have ult advantage, but you could lose it very easily. Bonesy with a pick on the Lumpy Seal. Actually, pick on the Lumpy Seal here. Both windows do come out, and it looks like it's going to be the advantage and mostly the entire point for the awesome anglers. Yes, it is there. Riddle Dog able to stagger out Bonesy a little bit, but it doesn't matter when you have Booney pushing your front line right here, protected by Sonic Chronic. They're finding picks when they need to, and they've completely staggered and pushed back the Arizona OTs. Yeah, they do cap the point, and they're getting a lot of staggers coming in. Booney does have this shatter available. We're potentially looking for a big shatter. Maybe combo with your Doomfist or your Cassidy. Uh, we'll have to see whether they actually end up doing that. More than likely, Booney's just going to look for a shatter when he sees opening. Flamble maybe fire strikes or something, but you know, on the side of the OTs, they do have this Diva Bomb core and beat. You're going to be looking for Riddle to potentially counter the Shatter or the grab that is coming up. Sonic Chronic already at 90% to his grab. Going to be looking for a big Graviton Surge, see if he can continue that the Zarya play like he did his D.Va. Yeah, Sonic Chronic been absolutely clinical thus far, but all is coming out on both sides here. Roar is going to be the first one to find the pick on to Booney, but now Flambo, a little bit split up on from his team. Luckily, a few of them are able to get back. With Booney down, they're able to create so much space, so much control, but don't forget about Sonic Chronic. <laughs> Sonic Chronic just saying, I can do stuff as well. I can play this main tank role and finds a couple as Bonesy's just picking off their back line. They took this fight dry. They didn't use that many ultimates, but at the same time they are the ones winning this fight and they should be able to cap the second point here yeah it was a great engage from the ot's rory getting a very good core coming in it splits off uh Booney and he doesn't end up getting punished but you know you pump more resources into sonic chronic sonic gets to 100 charge and he just starts pounding he gets to 100 charge kills a couple and then bonesy comes in and can clean up the rest yeah, and it looks like a few of the awesome anglers are going to be staggered back. Eventually going to be able to be, to be brought up by Zelos here. But you can see the switch by Roar coming out onto the May, able to split up the team. Bonesy forced a meteor strike, and it feels like all the alts are in favor of the awesome anglers here. They're able to create control. They're able to take space, but all the picks are coming in for the Arizona OTs. Lumpy Seal able to find one. Flambo doing a great job of pushing everybody back. Herbology, or is taken out and now awesome anglers fully forced back to their spawn in a point where they have to reset yeah great swap from rory he uses the may wall in order to effectively counter uh sonic chronic grab rory a very smart player ends up showing that on the may i hear that you have to be pretty smart to actually end up playing to effectiveness look early wall comes oh out my gosh early. the may walls the May wall is absolutely crazy. Booney oh tries to get the shatter, not really able to find much from that. High Noon on top of the payload, just over the Ryan shield there, able to pick up Strudel as well as the slow um, ice wall there coming in, but not really able to find much there. Now Rusty has to back up, and it's looking like 
the awesome Anglos have a very good push into the third point and the third potential cap here. Yeah, if Bonesy's looking for an engage on the flank, asks for the bubble, but isn't able to get it at the OS. Sonic Connect actually bubbles the wrong person, but Bonesy, good enough player to dodge and live. Flambo gets punished. Riddle falling very low on the flank. Bomb committed from Riley. It needs to be huge. It finds one into Sonic. Strudel. Maybe that's the only pick they need as Sonic goes down. Strudel finds one onto Kerbology and onto Bonesy. That's going to be a two piece right there. Now it's only Zelos on point, just trying to play for their life in the game. And there's not much life left. Is now Lumpy Seal or Mighty Dwarf has to fully reset here. Gets the stun. Not really able to be able to find anything from that. Their entire team chasing up, but then realizes Baboonie's right there. So you got to reset back at that point. Yeah, Flambo has the Shadow Art ready, as well as Riddle with the beat. Boonie will be getting the Shadow Art soon. Doom Bonesy goes in for the Doomfist engage, pops the Meteor Strike. Shadow comes in from Flambo. It's huge. Be committed just to seal out the fight. And that's a very quick team fight win from the OTs, using only B and Shatter. That means they have this May ult coming up. Whereas, you know, at the side of the Awesome Anglers, all they have is a Cassidy ult as well as a Shatter. Bonesy making the swap to Tracer. Maybe he feels like he'll be able to uh, punish the backline of the OTs more compared to when he was playing Doom. Yeah, but speaking of punishing the backline, you had Roar and Lumpy Seal both lurking on the back, knowing their exact win condition, able to find picks while Rusty just pushing from the front. They divide the team, they split them up, and they are just taking them out. Bonesy's able to find one, but at the end of the day, they're not able to do anything with just one pick. And third point KR, they're showing why this point is where all time banks go to die. The Arizona OT is doing an amazing job of holding out. Yeah, great play from Rory. Opts to uh, flank with the mail rather than just going straight on. Sonic had made the swap to Diva, maybe worried about him eating it, but it ends up getting a lot of value. Yeah, a lot of value here is exactly what they need, but there is an ult advantage for the awesome anglers here, and this is the exact time you want to do something big. They need a big shatter here. They aren't able to get it. Bath Lamp comes out. Are they going to be able to do anything with it? No, it's just past them. Lumpy Steel into their back line. Finds oh one, finds two. Riddle Dog with the follow up there, and geez, that is absolutely insane if you're an Arizona OTs fan. Yeah, Lumpy Seal throughout the series. He had one earlier. He's got some insane blossoms. Always ends up finding a few with it. I believe he found three on the first map and then finds another large amount there. With the pigs, Bomb Shatter combo comes in. And well, his window there. Yeah. Another, Able another to create a lot of space and sort of stagger out their team. They're pushing them all the way back to spawn. They don't want them to even get close to the payload. Now, finally backing up right there, but they're going to set up the necessary defenses. And Anglers just have to touch. It might be Bonesy going in. Does have the pulse bomb. Might be able to find something with it. And no, actually not even able to find anything. Blocked by the Immort Lamp right there. But that did give the Awesome Anglers their chance to reset their time to potentially take this. Bomb comes out from Sonic Chronic. It needs to be big here, but not able to find anything. Mighty Dwarf just on point, doing whatever they can. We see the Reaper Diff Sag in the chat right there, and it should be the end for the Awesome Anglers here as the Arizona OT is doing a great job of holding out. Yeah, just kind of stagger our fight here. Awesome Anglers making a comeback here. Bonesy or Booty commits the shatter, and that should be a team fight win for them. It was looking a little hectic for them, but just able to touch point enough, stall it out, and eventually get reinforcements back. Coming into this, the oh, pulse bomb. You may, you may talk. <laughs> yeah, sorry. With reinforcements coming back, I mean the. The Arizona OTs, all they need to do is get a touch here, and this could be a winnable fight for oh them. Oh my god. They do have ultimates coming out. Bonesy, dude, trying to get as many picks as possible. Takes out Flambo Jambo. They could be here for the comeback of the century right here, taking whatever they can. All comes out from Mighty Dwarf, able to find a couple. The bomb from Rusty, it needs to find something, but no, it's not going to get anything. And the awesome anglers from basically out of nowhere, cap on King's Row. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you actually saw that war, but uh, Booney pinned Flambo out of the shatter. So that's kind of, you know, an MTD coming in right there. Great play from uh, Booney, known as a dominant Reinhardt, as we said. You know, it shows Flambo, you know, the old, uh, the old uh, gamer prowess. But yeah, great play from him.
Yeah, great play by Heyman. Great plays overall. And it makes me sort of question exactly why the Arizona OTs did want to go to King's Row. Maybe they feel very, very dominant with their tank line here. And they also feel dominant on King's Row. We can see sort of a mirror comp coming out for basically everybody. But Mighty Dwarf opting to switch to the, the Bastion potentially? No, they're just memeing with that. Just going to stick with the Reaper. And Bonesy on the Junk is a very, very dangerous combination here. So I'm looking for him to do some big things. Get some big initial picks here in this next map. Yeah, Bonesy uh, maybe realizing that the Doomfist wasn't the play, got significantly more value on the Tracer, which, you know, kind of allowed them to break open that third point. Opting for more of a junk out of kind of somewhat traditional pick on King's Row. In the in the past, it's been played, but, you know, it's never really been hard meta, except for maybe Season 1 Owl. But, yeah, we'll have to see whether you can make it work. When you're going for the initial fire strike, after in chat saying do not eat this i like that it's a little bit of psychological mind games and maybe some plays into what the other teammates want but bonesy just camping in a little bit of a corner here just sitting on their back line trying to get a big explosion right there able to find a little bit of damage but no initial picks right now bonesy does get frozen out finds a pick and gets instantly traded back there flambo doing whatever they can to take some space there but also gets shut down and now that rusty's dmax it's going to be the advantage to the awesome anglers in this fight yeah bonesy doing a little bit of sneaky hiding doesn't necessarily get a pick off it but gets a lot of disruption coming in kind of boops everyone around and ends up getting value off it flambo jambo showing why he uh got mvp by playing that really aggressive reinhardt style gets punished for it but if left unchecked, Flambo could easily just build up a shatter and MTD uh, the entire team. As you see, his 80% compared to Bo Booney's only 40. Yeah, and speaking of percents, the BAP ult already able to be activated here before anybody else can. Curvology finally builds hers up as well. Oh, but oh my god. Be, oh my gosh, Lumpy Seal, that was absolutely insane. The Deadeye finds through the Maywall blocks the bomb from Sonic Chronic at the exact right time and now it's only Zelos trying to solo a point they're not able to find anything and even though the awesome anglers may have the ultimate advantage they do not have the point advantage as the Arizona OTs are able to cap point A yeah honestly that comes back off of Flambo Flambo landed a big shatter although he did get punched for it it set up the high noon from Lumpy Seal who ends up you know just killing everything however Bonesy uses the tire Riptire going up, trying to target their back line, but they've already heard it, they've already seen it out, and at that point, you got every necessary counter at Bumpy Seal able to take it down there, and it looks like they're sort of just struggling to get it through Choke here, doing whatever they can. They do activate the May ultimate, but Mighty Dwarf gets a few picks before that even happens right there. Gets frozen up, but... This might be soon enough where they can get picks. Strudel gets one on the Mighty Dwarf, but Booney and the Awesome Anglers are going to be the one who have control right now, and it's going to force the reset from the Arizona OTs. Yeah, Rory got a big blizzard, but no one is able to follow up on it with the beat coming in from uh, Zelos. Booney Looks does like get the... picked. Window is going to come out, as well as the bomb from Rusty Goomba onto their back line. Luckily, Kerbology was there to sort of counter that, find whatever they needed. Sonic Chronic getting one onto Strudel, so maybe Strudel playing a little bit too hyper-aggressive there. But same with Bonesy, though, as Riddle Dog is able to pick that up. Kerbology with another window from there. That's going to cut the aggression of the Arizona OT, split up their team a little bit, but not enough as Flambo just able to reset with the full team. And now they're a full six. They're able to push back. Not really many ultimates for either side here, and it's all going to come up to see who is able to do what ultimate. Roar tries to go for the Blizzard, not able to find it there, unfortunately. And it's going to be the Riptire on the back line. Bonesy shuts down Flambo, and that's going to be a great way to sort of stagger out the Arizona OTs. Yeah, Bonesy showing why he's such a fearful player in... Fear... Yeah, feared player in the Gopher Watch League. Gets a punish on Rory during the Blizzard, cancels it even. Which, you know, at that point, you've lost your biggest win condition. And then on top of that, pops the tire and gets another kill. Which, that's just a team fight win right there. I would like to shout out a Lumpy Seal. Currently at 23 final blows. Next highest in the lobby is at 15. 
So he's making some actually crazy plays right now in the Cassidy. Lucio's making some absolutely crazy plays, but there's no ults in the favor of the Arizona OTs. Flambo may have been able to build up his, but no gets taken out. I think they're just saying, oh, we got to take this fight dry, or we just got to get out of here. And I think get out, they will. They don't want to get staggered up here. So there's just going to be some quick wipe ups for the awesome anglers. You do have... One member of their team, Strudel, just resetting out the back. Should be able to sort of taxi their teammates back in. But another clean fight win for the awesome anglers. And they're able to hold on to this point B for a little bit longer. Yeah, at that point... Uh... Oh, whoa. Okay. Yeah, quick team fight win for the awesome anglers. Ends up staggering out Lumpy where he's forced to jump off the map. However, Bonesy on the flank. Huge flank shatter from Booney with the bomb! Oh my god. And, and Booney, Sonic, Chronic, I, I'm going to say both of them because it was an effort together. Able to find basically their entire team. And yeah, there it is. Team kill for the awesome anglers right there. And that's going to be huge because they're using their alts with purpose. They're able to only use two in that fight. Just getting an easy wipe. And now they're basically going to have four more alts built up. They have the alt advantage. They have the positional advantage. And it's just going to be what can the um, Arizona OTs do to contest here. Both map windows use. The shatter does come out, but it's going to be Mighty Dwarf on the back trying to find whatever they can. Gets shut down by the dead eye from Lumpy Seal. Rusty able to bomb in. Find one. All alts are being used in this fight. Everybody is pressing Q. Everybody's trying to take the space, and it looks like it's going to be the Arizona OTs who get that space, and it's going to be on the awesome anglers to sort of recontest here. Yeah, OTs had one goal in mind that fight. Let's just press Q and see what happens. They clicked every single Q except for Rory's ult, who had not built it yet. So, yeah, I didn't really have the opportunity to press it. Uh, anglers reciprocated it, but going into the next fight here, I'll just see what they can do. I can see what they can do, but with the pick onto Booney already, it may not be enough, but. Zealous doing a great job of sort of disrupting the back line. Blizz is going to come out, actually going to be able to be in effect there, and that might be exactly what the Arizona OTs need. Only one left to contest, and at that point, they're just going to get the cap, but with a lot less time than the awesome anglers had, and they need to push it all the way. Yeah, I said that they used every ult except for Rory's, who hadn't built it up yet. Well, he built up the ult, and based off of that, just won them the team fight. Huge blizzard coming for them, but now that all they have is Flambo, we'll have to see if he can make a play with it. Yes, yeah, all gonna be the back on the back of Flambo, but remember, not many alts built up on either side, so it's gonna be Sonic Chronic with the bomb, seeing what they can do as well here. Only a minute left on the time bank, and with most of the Arizona OTs pushed back into a corner, they need to find something massive. Roar finds one onto Bonesy, but it's not gonna be enough when the rest of your teammates are getting picked out slowly but surely, and they're able to play so clinically. You just have to reset, and you have to play for the last fight here. Yeah, you find a pick on the Bonesy, but in the grand scheme of things, that one pick won't matter at all. Bonesy will be back in time. And at this point, Awesome Anglers have a huge ult advantage coming into this. They have five ults, whereas the OTs only have four, and the ults of Awesome Anglers. About the same effectiveness, but a little bit better because they have the, shat the beat, but Shatter comes in from Flambo. Huge Shatter from him. This shatter is huge on picking Booney, and that's going to deny the Awesome Anglers one of the ults that they so badly needed there in this last fight, in this final situation. Sonic Chronic doing whatever they can to sustain. Going to have to utilize the bomb here. Not going to be able to find anything from it, but it's going to enable Bonesy to get a pick when they need it most. But Flambo doing amazing things on point, just swinging, taking as much control as they can. But it will go into overtime here, and it's just going to be on the Arizona OTs. Can they stick alive? Can their team stay in this fight yeah they do have a slight ult advantage coming out from this but nothing you know to write home about they have rory's ult but mighty dwarf has one to reciprocate we'll have to see which one can get more value those are the two big ults coming in unless if one of the ryans makes a huge play here it's all gonna be about these huge plays you see basically every q in the lobby being pressed if you have an ult at this point in time use it and it's gonna be rusty's ult and the other alts that are gonna come in the most clutch they're on the point they're able to take control and that's gonna be round two complete both teams getting a minute left to play it's all gonna be coming up to this overtime and this is crazy close between both teams here yeah honestly Pretty even match so far. Maybe uh, both feeling a little bit more confident on the brawl, I think, compared to their uh, previous comps. 
Whereas, you know, that's what you'd expect from these two teams. I would say potentially two of our most dominant brawl teams in the league. You know, I don't know if I'm forgetting out on anyone, but we'll have to see whether they continue this dominant streak. Who can get that first team fight win? I think the first team fight win is kind of like the big one here. If on the attack you win the first fight, you can easily snowball that into two, three, maybe even four team fight wins. Strudel yeah. opting for the brig pick. Whereas Zealous is teasing a Zenyatta pick? If neither team goes with a Lucio here, I'll be pretty surprised. I'll be pretty surprised, especially because Lucy, Lucio can taxi your teammates back. It's so good for sustaining. I love Lucio as a player. I know probably the entire league knows that bad by this point. Zillow's finally doing Lucio some justice, switching onto that character. But yeah, this is truly going to decide, in my opinion, who has the best brawl in the league. It's King's Row. You have Flambo Jambo versus Booney. You could not ask for anything better, and I could not ask for any better action here as we are hopping in to the overtime of King's Row, and we do get to see the absolute dominance from these teams. Yeah, we'll have to see which Ryan prevails, which brawl team shows up to be the best. Wall comes up from Rory, though. Flambo with a great counter pin coming in, allows him to live for a bit. Freeze on to, from Rory onto Booney. Booney falling very low, but is kept up by Kerbology so far. Does eventually get punished, but he might have lived long enough in order for his team to win. Brig got quite a bit of value in ult charge there, but you know, that sustained healing just wasn't enough to keep their team up compared to the Lucio speed engage. Lucio speed engage being absolutely clinical on keeping on the point and it could be clinical for the capture Flambo Jambo trying to get back but then realizes it's impossible we got to stop him on point B we got to stop him in the future here and this has got to be a huge motivation boost if you are the awesome anglers here because with all the time you get a full cap on point A and now it's just how far can you push the payload yeah Strudel does have this rally coming up I question the brick pick but he built an extremely fast rally, and everyone knows rally is a pretty dominant ultimate. I think you'll want to be using this before Bonesy gets that blizzard, because blizzard's just going to shut it down, but as I say that, Bonesy does get the blizzard. It's going to be kind of the battle of the rally versus the blizzard. Both are committed at the same time. They don't have the speed boost to kite the blizzard. Yeah, but Strudel is able to sneak out of the blizzard sort of deny that potential there. Lumpy Seal with the Deadeye able to find Kerbology. That should be able to slow down the team because they only have the Lucio heals. No beat left. Sonic Chronic actually oh. able to find one and the Remek onto Roar right there. Sonic Chronic showing up when it matters most. And even though the Arizona OTs are stalling out the point for a little bit longer, the team fight is going to go to the awesome anglers and all the control with it. Yeah, that was an extremely close fight. Uh, probably would have wanted speed to kite the blizzard that blizzard did end up getting a couple of the players from the OTs punish Lumpy seal did get some picks to try to you know turn that fight around But it just wasn't enough especially with you know sonic chronic coming in and just Dominating your team with relative ease getting pick you can see pick. Strudel here is able to switch back onto Lucio here, but the shadow is gonna come out from Booney Not really gonna be able to find much but able to split up the team enough for mighty dwarf to go in <gasps> Finds one, the bomb will come out. The trades are going both ways, and Flambo finally says, Enough of this. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna create the space that I can on main tank, and I am gonna put a stop to the awesome anglers. But is that gonna be soon enough, or will the Arizona OTs fall just short? In a few moments, we're gonna have to find out. Yeah, honestly, Booney landed a pretty decent shatter. You know, I think he found a couple stuns, if I'm not mistaken. Or at least made a bunch of space with it, but Flambo just shows, comes in, proves why he was the MVP of Season 4, maybe? I think it was Season 4. Yeah, Season 4, yes. With a huge shatter play from him, absolutely dominating that fight and turning it around for his team. Feels like we have star-studded MVP uh, prowess from basically every player on these lineups all so amazing in their own regard and all need to pop off on these final fleeting moments of king's row it's all gonna come down to round four no if ands or buts no ties even possible at this point it's all gonna be on can the awesome anglers put a stop to the arizona ot's here yeah we're gonna have to look for a uh, you know pretty good engage from the ot's as I said, that first fight is the most important on both attack and defense. Zealous opting for the Brig, you know, maybe saw Strudel on the Brig and was like, yo, he built up a pretty quick rally, I might as well do it. So, you know, we'll have to see whether he gets more value than Strudel did, because although Strudel built the rally, 
I think you're kind of missing out on that speed boost. Feels like these teams are so similar in every way. The comps are almost like perfectly mirrored, and even if they aren't mirrored, you know that the one player can play the other player, the player's character just as well. So it's all about the selections you make. It's all about the choices we make as a team. It's all about these May walls that come out, able to split up both teams effectively. No team's able to get any progress from it, but Booney doing a great job of pushing back the Arizona OT, and now it's mostly in a one-fight territory. Flambeau doing some good job of building up an ultimate, but nothing's really gonna come of this they need to find a way to win this fight dry or they need to sustain this long enough where they can get an advantage maywell's traded here riddle dog does find a pick on the boonie though that's a huge pick from them sonic with the trade on to flambo sonic making a big play herbology commits this window looking to potentially do some damage or just amp the healing coming through it touch comes in they stop him at 66 percent but it's a kind of a drawn out fight here high noon committed from lumpy looking to find value does not find anything However, Rory's getting really close to this Blizzard. Mighty Dwarf finds a pick onto the Cassidy. Rory needs to get this Blizzard. He's so close. He gets to it just in time. Bonesy does as well, though. Huge shatter from Flambo. But the Blizzard is just too they're much. They're not able to find the picks. They're not able to get the picks from any of this. Mighty Dwarf comes in with the Death Blossom just to close it out. And that's going to be map two in favor of the awesome anglers there. Yeah, they find a uh, second map win here. That was a much closer. Actually... Both of them were really close. These two teams yeah. are almost equal in skill level at this point, I'd say. It just, you know, comes down to the little plays. Arizona OTs, although they're down 2-0, that doesn't really tell the whole story, I don't think. I don't think it tells the whole story at all. And it, it, at this point, I could see either of these teams, or I could see, I guess, the Arizona OTs in this case, just full reverse sweeping it just because these maps have been so close and even if they do reverse sweep i'm gonna say those maps are gonna be so close as well but i'm interested to see what the arizona's ot's plan is coming in to these next maps because they are going to really have to show up here big it is potentially the last game if the awesome anglers do win it so what strategy do you think you'd go on if you're the um arizona ot's in this situation and we do know the map choice now. Yeah, it looks like they're teasing the Dorado. Probably going to commit to it. You don't really, you know, choose a map and back out of it. But Dorado, pretty interesting. Maybe looking to uh, make some hero swaps. Maybe put Riley onto that monkey. The hero that he was kind of known for in the past. I, I you know, I want to say it. I doubt it's going to happen. But, you know, I would love to see it. I'm a big fan of the Riley monkey. But I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Again, not sure if it's going to happen, but if you can't beat them on a straight up row, as it's seen in King's Row, I like the choice of Dorado because it gives you a lot of options. It gives you a lot of potential. And I believe, are we ready on our side? Yep, here. We are. are. All right, perfect. So, and we believe we will be hopping in any moment, or if not any moment, right now, to Dorado here. And I'm very excited to see what these teams have in store for us for this map. Yeah, going to be looking to see, you know, kind of what they decide to go with. I'd expect some more classic of uh, dive coming out from this teams, but, you know, let's go for Watch League. Who, kn who knows what's going to happen? Hey, we who could... knows what's going to happen? That, that's the fun of it all. Anything could happen. You could pull out some crazy compositions that nobody would ever expect. I know... I know, I know the Iceland Amps. I'm just going to give a quick <laughs> shout out to that team. Uh, one of their IGLs, I, I forget, oh, I think it's Trey is the name uh, of their uh, person maybe, in charge. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I, I've seen that they've been playing around with a few funny comps right there. So, um, yeah. You can see anything here, and we do get a pause. Interesting, but we will get to analyze a few of the compositions, especially the compositions of the Awesome Angler. We do have the Bonesy Far with the Amiro, Amiro Pocket as well, and Zelos on the Ana. Some interesting choices on that side, and interesting choices on both sides as well. Yeah, I feel like... Uh... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, we might have some issues. It seems have like... Some issues. The OTs are calling out the Bonesy comp for being potentially over SR. I'm wondering what's going to happen, considering I believe the first map... First map was over SR. Yeah, first map was Question over mark? SR then, I believe so. Which, well, you know, yeah. I'm not sure whether the, you know, 
OTs are going to care much about that. Could be something to look out for. Maybe some drama happening with it, but hopefully, you know, everyone's like, oh, whatever it happens, we'll just try to win this map. That's the easiest route, but... we Bonesy teased the Pharah. It could happen. I... I don't know. If it does, I'll be kind of surprised. Bonesy, known for, like, that Doomfist, even the Echo. I don't know if I've ever seen this fair. I am I know it's gonna be nutty, you know. Guaranteed at least probably 4,100 on it, but... And, and now they got the Kribology Pocket onto the Bonesy here. And yeah, some interesting composition. Seems like a few switch-ups overall, though. But still a lot of potential from both of these compositions thus far into these rounds. And I'm just interested to see what each of these teams are going to be looking for and the subtle differences i think it was going to be what matters so as you can see they have riddle dog on the brig compared to the curbology on the ana as well as strudel who is now switched to the dps line and um in comparison to obviously bonesy on the farah but with a lot of hit scan characters you have a lot of potential against a character like farah yeah farah not too meta of a pick it's very hard character to execute due to the amount of hit scans as well as diva in the game so we'll have to see if he can make a play with it already accruing almost 40 percent ult charge before the fight has even started that's gonna be crazy so far and that's sort of the accuracy advantage if you have somebody like bonesy on far you're able to build up alt so so quickly you know the positions of your opponents you're just able to create so so much space now you have boonie trying to take the high ground but just doing a great job of it so far with the help of Sonic Chronic. They're able to just absolutely dominate this high ground and do crazy things as a team. And this is looking similar to the dominance that we saw from Bonesy as well as Kerbology last season on the Cano Cantaloupes because they're just rolling right now. Yeah, even against the double hit scan, Bonesy managed to find a lot of value. Making plays almost up to that barrage, the first ultimate in the lobby. But that's a free cap for them. They try to contest, but OTs don't make it in time, which is kind of a misplay. Especially if they get staggered out here, they could lose high ground control. And it looks like they might get staggered out. Flambo Jambo's able to find one, but with Strudel and Flambo down, you can't really fully contest this, especially with the respawn advantage for the awesome anglers. So this is Bonesy just literally jumping on this advantage here staggering basically every single one of these players and now they're going to get a lot of free space onto point b here yeah the high grounds of dorado is one of the most oppressing things in the game it's kind of why a lot of people hate dorado as a map because of this difficult high ground to control however if you you know stagger out that fight there they already have control of it they're on top of it ot's do manage to reclaim some space it looks like they're actually just going to give up high ground for free here well, you always have Bonesy able to sort of poke onto high ground, but not a Flambo Jambo creates that space by force. But we look to see our first alts coming out. We do have the Nano onto one of the awesome anglers, as well as the both visors use. The one from uh, Roar wasn't able to find much, and the one from Strudel, or Mighty Dwarf actually, was able to find a pick there, and it's still on the favor of the awesome anglers, as they're just rolling on this map right now. Yeah, Booney finding a couple of kills with the Primal Rage, you know. A hero, you might know him from the Reinhardt, but I believe it was in Altitude Esports, uh, a league that he played in before GoPro, actually. I'm pretty sure he was kind of known as a kind of crazy monkey as well. Still, you know, playing that Ryan hero, but also having a nutty monkey in him, which he's, you know, proving right now. They're just able to create so much space. They're able to like retain so much control. The rally is used preemptively by Riddle Dog to sort of stop this push and that's all they need to do at this point. They need to stop the push however they can. High Noon from Strudel not able to find anything and well it wasn't able to find anything. Luckily the bomb was able to do some big things from Rusty. It's able to pick up Bonesy, the one player we want to shut down at this point. Bonesy completely ignoring the fact that he had an ultimate and just switching on to Cass, feeling like that's the best choice for the awesome anglers at this point. Yeah, Pharaoh not known as a too strong of hero, and to be honest, Barrage is probably one of the worst parts of her kit. Kind of just a press Q to die ultimate, so he's opting to ignore that ult charge, but swaps over the Cassidy and known uh, as quite a good aimer, finds an early pick onto Wiggle Higgle. And Flamba falling as well. 
They're able to create a lot of space on this right side up here and effectively take over the high ground. And the high ground has been the win condition for them. If they're able to control the spots of the map that the Arizona OTs would typically hold, I mean, you're able to just flush them out, completely isolate them, make it so they have no way to contest. The Arizona OTs just waiting up as a team. Trying to get this reset here, but it's so hard to reset when every time you peek, Bonesy is just there to find pick after pick after pick. Alts are coming out, and it seems like they're all going to be the ultimates of the awesome anglers there. They're just going to push the card for free. Mighty Dwarf is finding picks. Bomb comes out. Doesn't even matter as Arizona, or Arizona OTs get completely shut down. Yeah, Booney with the victory now gets slept at the very end, but it leads to nothing, to be honest. Uh... Angler is kind of proving that they're dominant on both compositions, the monkey comp as well as the brawl comp. OTs may be thinking that they could have, you know, some dominance on the monkey comp. You know, quickly proven wrong. Bonesy on that fair and then swapping to Cassie just finds way too much value for the OTs to be able to deal with. That's going to be the name of the game, finding value, winning these team fights, and utilizing your ultimates at the right time. And the question is, can these players figure it out? If you're the Arizona OTs, you're currently down 0-2, you need to figure out something here. And maybe that something is a Lucio pick, a more unconventional pick on Dorado. Well, nope, we're a Wiggle Higgle just playing around with Lucio. Going to switch back over to the Mercy and... Utilizing Echo here, maybe they're predicting a preemptive Farah and trying to take down this space or just trying to take out high ground. Either way, I'm liking that they're switching some stuff up and I'm liking the potential for the lineup they have right now. Yeah, Strudel, kind of more of an Ana bat player. Uh, and Zen, I'd say. You know, flexes over the DPS occasionally. Usually on that Hanzo hero, I want to say, is his, you know, almost signature Special DPS hero. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, teasing the Echo maybe ends up getting value here. We'll have to see. Going against the Bonesy Soldier, you know. Bonesy, known as that projectile player, however, his aim is unironically insane. Probably the best tracking in the Go for Watch League. You know, maybe by M Mikey might be a little bit better, but, you know, still crazy. Yeah, still absolutely crazy, and helping find the picks when they need. It seems like Mighty Dwarf's going to take over as a projectile player, and really showing that these, both the, the entire DPS line for the Awesome Anglers can really play whatever. It doesn't matter who, which character they're on. They'll be a dominant character as long as their team comp is playing together, as long as they're doing the right things at the right time, and they're really showing up. They have this high ground completely controlled, completely shut down. We see Rusty jump up and they're actually going to be able to find the pick on bonesy and that might be the pick that they need at this point in the game they need to find something quick from it mighty dwarf gets the dmac onto rusty there and i don't know if i'm the arizona ot's you need to find some way to get value out of this yeah they do find the pick on the bonesy however bonesy will be back very fast where the riley mech takes a little bit to build up he does get it potentially looking for a remake play no he just decides to remake on his own Bonesy is back though, and he does have the visor, although he instantly gets punished again. The Strudel Echo finding some insane value right away. Flambo Strudel gets Echo in. finding some insane value, and they also get the res onto Bonesy somehow, even when pressured. They have the team chemistry, the team calm to sort of create this space. And speaking of space being created, Mighty Dwarf with the ultimate to sort of split up the team as much as he can, but it doesn't matter. It seems like the entire team has already been fully eliminated there. Just a few left on point. Roar just trying to stay alive, but can't really find anything. That's a great job of just splitting up, splicing out, and then completely eliminating the Arizona OTs. Yeah, now the ult advantage is in the favor of the OTs this fight, I'd say, by a little bit. Rory makes the slap to Widow, maybe looking to make a hero play here. However, Strudel does have that copy. As long as he uh, does not get punished by the Bonesy Soldier during this copy, could find some insane value with it. I would say most likely looking for a swap onto a tank. Copy can be one of the most game-changing ults, especially into a dive comp, but it doesn't matter if Bonesy is able to find value. Bonesy gets slept, but unfortunately woken up basically instantly, and it does shut down his visor a bit, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, as I believe that's going to be a remake by Rusty. Might be good to get some value here. The primal from Flambo coming out, but getting absolutely punished. Mighty Dwarf and Bonesy saying absolutely not. You are not going to come into our house and 
and <laughs> try to disrupt our team. We are going to play dominant. We are going to find the picks when we need to, and we are going to take your team out. Yeah, the Boonie Monkey proving to be pretty dominant here. Finds multiple opening picks that fight. You know, had a little struggle jumping over a ledge. You know, he got stuck on it. Unfortunately, I was spectating it when it happened, but you know, he he already found the value. He did enough. He could, he could struggle to walk for a little bit. Yeah, as long as you're getting the value at the end of the day, that's all you need. And it's going into one fight territory for the Arizona OTs. So this is where you need to do something big. And I've been waiting on the Strudel copy. It hasn't come out yet. And here it is. Copies in to D.Va. Might be able to shut down Sonic Chronic. But Sonic Chronic just using the bomb. And that's going to shut down the copy. The copy's going to bomb itself too. But going to get no value from that. And those are gonna, just going to be two alts effectively traded. Bonesy already built up his visor already. As well as a Kerbology Velk just to back up the team. Just to get the res. Nano comes out as well. There was no ultimates to hold left. The entire Arizona OTs get staggered out, taken down, and I don't believe anybody's even going to be able to touch at this point. Yeah, a huge rema or a huge bump from Sonic. Uses it just to, you know, remech, but it actually kicks a Strudel out of the copy, and, you know, Echo could easily find, you know, two to three bomb or two bombs, you know, in a single D.Va copy, so shutting that down is very good for them. A little a little banter going on in the chat, but overall great play from everyone on both teams. Anglers do end up taking taking the win, but you know. I don't think the 3-0 storyline shows the true story. You know, the last map I will say was very dominant by the Anglers. However, the previous two maps, you know, they were close. They, yeah, they, they were very, very close. And I think both teams definitely do have potential. But I, I do like the comment, though. This is kind of an Angler's Redemption arc here. They got 3 0 would by I, I think some cool team named the Iceland Ames. Feel free to check them out. This message was brought to you by the Iceland Ames Foundation. Um, <laughs> but they were able to 3 0 in this map. And that's, that's going to be great for them because once you give players like Bonesy momentum and players like Booney momentum, they're going to take it and they're going to go places with it. So I'm interested to see what both these teams can do in the next maps i believe both teams go to one and one in the overall standings and just again some great go for watch league content yeah great play from both teams um now i think i think we gotta choose the mvp i i know mvp i, of the match. I know i i know who uh, you know who i'm thinking right? right yeah i know who you're thinking of and i'm also thinking of them okay ready got who is it who is it are we saying it at the same time? Yeah, ready? Saying it? Three, okay. three, two, two one, one. Sonic, Sonic Chronic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I was so, I was so confident that you were gonna say that. Um, got it in chat. Sonic Chronic MVP. Hopefully, we'll be able to check the in with him in just a few minutes. But overall, what did you think about this, these matches, and this, I guess, entire series today? Yeah. Overall, I thought this was a great game. I don't think, as I said earlier, the 3 0 storyline does not tell the whole story. You know, if people say, oh my god, Angler's 3 0 OTs must be a bad team. You know, that that's not true. They had an awesome showing. Didn't make it in the first two maps. We're so close to the end, but, you know, third map, maybe they just had lost all momentum at that point, but either way, it's a great series. Now, let's head over to Trios and uh, check in with Sonic. Hello, Hello? Sonic Chronic. Howdy. Yeah. Nice, nice win today. Congratulations. Uh, you you were the player of the match. Great, great I play from you. I didn't even realize that. I just tuned into Overwatch and then looked at the chat. Yeah, honestly, so your first map was insane. Uh, really? You had thirty-one final blows. I, oh wait, what? Or right, thirty-one or twenty-one? You had the same amount of final like, blows as Bonesy. Thirty-one is kind of crazy. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, you. I believe you had thirty. I want to yeah. say thirty-one. I mean, I will say I was kind of getting like the one HP people a lot. Hey, yeah. it doesn't matter. That's what matter. you need to do, though. That's yeah. what you need to do, though. Like, if the goal of the game is to eliminate the other team, and if you eliminate the other team, if your teammates are getting the one HP, it doesn't matter. You're the one who's finishing the job, and that that's what matters at the end of the day. You're confirming kills, and at the end of the day, that's the thing that's going to shut down teams. But I got to ask, how does it feel to be MVP? And talk just a little bit about the match that you guys had today. Um, I will say 
Uh, first of all, I'm kind of surprised that I'm MVP because I think Bonesy, Booney, everyone on my team played really good. Uh, the match today, uh, I will say it's Angler's Redemption arc. Because <laughs> we got 3 0 and now we 3 0 them. Yeah. Other team. Yeah, you guys got angry from uh, the loss, mm -hmm. you know. Wanted to get revenge on uh, not the team that beat you, but, you know. You, you just yeah. wanted you were out for you guys were out for blood you know you, you got to you had to beat someone not... we we had we had to we had to prove why we were I think number one in the power rankings first week yeah but and I think you did a great job of proving that in my opinion like it was a very dominant matches even though the first two matches were close at the end of the day you were the team that was picking up those wins and if I can ask what what communication with the team do you feel is integral to kind of securing these wins. Uh, Bonesy does a really good job calling uh, what ults we're going to use before fights and uh, what we're going to do. Uh, I remember on King's Row, I was kind of doing a little bit of throwing because he was calling bubbles and I kind of was missing them. Like, every single time I tried to bubble him, someone would, like, speed in front of me. But, yeah. 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 Bon Bonesy, Bonesy kind of leads the communication and it's really good. And it helps us a lot. Yeah. That's what I'll say. A couple unfortunate bubbles. I did notice that. However, you know, overall your performance through all three maps was amazing. I gotta say, but you know, I think we—it's time to ask the big question. If you were an MVP, who would you give it to? I know it's gonna uh, be a tough decision, but ooh, uh, honestly, if I if I were to give someone else the MVP, is that the question? Yep. Yes. Uh, I'll give it to honestly, Booney. I'd say. Booney played pretty good. Yeah. Honestly, Booney was pretty dominant on the monkey, I'd have to say. Was finding yeah. a lot of final blows and just making a whole lot of space. Probably probably made it pretty easy for you to, you know, pop off. He, he carried us on King's Row, I will say. I did see a few MTDs in the chat and King's Row, I'm not going to lie. Go, going, going, sort of going both ways. But at the end of the day, Booney did win the map. And you guys were able to mm -hmm. put up a um, very impressive third round on King's Row just with that final push that you guys made. Just absolutely incredible. Yeah. 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 Anyways, I think that'll be it for this match of the Gopher Watch League. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. I'm sorry Proud was a little scuffed. I, uh did not have OBS downloaded on this computer and I didn't realize till about two minutes before the match. So I decided to follow the production too. very quickly. Yeah, a little bit scuffed, but you know, we made it through it. So I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, a lot of matches going tomorrow. I'm not sure whether they'll be officially streamed. However, check out for some uh, player POVs. They could easily come in. So anyways, thank you all for coming out and good night.